Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tech Champions. I'm your host, Daniel Beatty. As you know, we take time each week to sit down with thought leaders and industry experts in the field of technology. We always have amazing guests on the show, and today is no exception. Joining us from Charlotte, North Carolina is Scott DeAngelis. Scott, welcome to the program. Daniel, thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Glad you can make it. So, Scott, you're the AVP um, of Financial Technology Sales at Selby Jennings. And let's start by just telling our, our viewing audience a little bit about your background and your history, kind of your journey to this point. Yeah, sure. So I've actually just relocated within the last couple of months from, I was born and raised in New York. We, had an, we have an office right by Grand Central and I was brought on board, a small group of guys. We have a very siloed business. So we're specialist recruiters within the financial services sector and my particular expertise is within financial technology, sales, pro, sales product, and marketing roles. So that can be predominantly, I would say, we do most of our work with folks who are either digital consulting client partners, data sales representatives, or SaaS salespeople. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, Scott, I hear a lot about building a team, uh, how the challenges and things associated with building a team uh, here in Jacksonville um, and it's so incredibly important to have, you know, as they say, the right people on the bus. Um, and, uh, but I know there, it can be really hard, right? So can you give our uh, viewers a little taste of, or some ideas about some of the challenges that you see um, associated with building a, a team? Yeah, absolutely. I think that where we've really done some of our best work, particularly within the tech space, is with these companies that they have a great offering or they're perhaps looking to where they just secure funding and they need to get those folks on their radar. Oftentimes, you know, the best talent isn't applying in. So we have to find ways to build those relationships opportunistically and be able to get those folks excited about something a bit different um, where they may not be actively applying in. So it's, it's really helping small, where we've had the most success is really helping firms that are a bit smaller and, want to expand with the best talent possible. And like you said, or Jim Collins has said, get the right folks on the bus to, uh, to keep things moving along. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to me to watch. Uh, IT has always been a hot field, technology, um, things like that, but especially uh, the field of things like security and other, um, other topics like that that really have negative unemployment. They say there's you know, 50 to 100,000 or more um, unfilled, unfilled jobs in a lot of those. So um, that, uh, that makes what you do all that much more important. So that's great. Um, you know, and, and I, I feel like every day I read a new article about some company that's moving from California to Texas or New York to Florida. There's just so much yeah. of that going on right now, just the, the relocation. And you, you just mentioned you relocated yourself, right, from New York to, yeah. to Charlotte. And yeah, it's... Um, there's, there's kind of a, I think you use the phrase, um, uh, an exodus, the talent exodus, right, from, from other, other spots kind of to, that so to the southeast area. Um, you know, tell us what some of the ramifications are for companies here in the southeast, um, like folks like us here in Florida. Yeah, so that's, that was one of the big things for me. Um, we had a very successful desk with national coverage in New York, and to be able to take advantage, this is our one of our newest offices, we opened here in 2019, and it was a goal of mine to continue building our pipeline out and then eventually come down here to take on you know, what we, we see as a very viable market for technology. I think you know, it's been widely publicized, even you know, the pandemic certainly added to it, but I would say you know, folks from California and these Silicon Valley hubs have decided it looks like they've kind of moved either to Las Vegas or far more than that. A lot of them have gone to Austin, as a lot of people are familiar with. Um, for myself, I've seen a lot of folks go from New York, Boston, down to Florida, um, Texas as well, and even the Carolinas. Um, so that's been something that it's certainly impacting the talent landscape. You're seeing less of a coagulation of talent in these technology hubs, and it's really helping to broaden the horizons, get these solutions in the hands of the right folks. And it, it kind of allows for like banks, and for instance, they're looking to move as well and the tech vendors will follow. So that's been something that is exciting for me as a recruiter to help folks to make that move and having the personal experience myself. Um, and also seeing the growth of these companies in areas where we haven't seen it previously. 
Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. And um, <clears throat> Austin's a great town, by the way. <laughs> I can see why people want to be there. Uh, and I think I just read last week that Airbnb, I think, is opening a big um, tech hub in Atlanta. So that was just one, one more story that kind of supports that as well. So is that, so for us, us folks here in Jacksonville and the surrounding area, is that a, um, is that good news or bad news as we're trying to fill up our team? So we're going to have more resources at our fingertips or, or less? What's your take on that? Well, it's, yeah, it's certainly, I don't think it's ever a bad thing to have folks moving around to places where their talent could very well be needed. I think for a lot of these technology, technology roles, rather, um, you know, those folks have been able to re work remotely and build their teams and build their, their offerings and solutions, you know, from wherever they've pleased for quite some time. And I think this has only expanded that now for even some front office people, um, like the salespeople and product managers that I deal with to perhaps do, you know, flexible working. We've got plenty of candidates who either commute from places like Montreal or Boston to New York and split time there. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more of that. Like, you know, You've heard the old adage with folks who are retirement age, kind of being snowbirds and, and living in a place like New York and Florida, um, you know, for half of the year. I think this will make things like that in the business world more of a reality as companies expand their presence um, from their more traditional hubs and get their best talent in places where the quality of life might be better, the cost of living might be better. And, you know, one of the things that I think comes with that as well is, you know, do we, you know, do salaries reflect that? Are companies going to be able to save some money on salaries and bonuses by having folks live in a place that might be more affordable. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you, you mentioned the pandemic. How do you think the, that the pandemic has affected um, how people are placed and, and where they, where they live and things like that? Certainly been a shift. It is myself dealing with and recruiting sales professionals. Many of my clients said that, you know, the guys who are under 30 who perhaps have done a lot of their business through getting cold calls and getting those face-to-face -face meetings set up, weren't able to do that. And so without having those relationships to fall back on and being in a seat where you have to generate new revenue without that, you know, face-to-face -face contact, you know, Zoom is great, but it, um, it wasn't the same. And a lot of those guys struggled and either moved into account management roles. When layoffs came around, a lot of folks were displaced, were very talented. Um, it, it does create a challenge in that respect. And I think from a recruiting standpoint as well, the interview process has changed. It's, you know, Zoom again, it's, it's a great resource, but in, you know, with a salesperson, charisma, body language, you may not necessarily get all of that on a, on a Zoom interview. Um, so it, it definitely has changed the way we onboard. Folks are doing a lot of cold calls remotely to learn how to coach up and, and present a value proposition in their sales pitch. And, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of benefits to it, but it has changed a lot of the way that we do our work. Yeah, yeah, and it's been interesting for me to see how a lot of companies have moved from the mentality of everybody has to be in the office all the time to, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, we're now I guess, I guess we're seeing productivity um, out of our folks to now like, wait a minute, they might even be more productive at, <laughs> at their houses uh, and working remotely. So, and then it obviously changes who you can recruit and from where as well, so. Uh, a company based here, we could find someone in Utah that was, you know, willing to work Eastern hours, right? Um, that was yeah. super talented. So it opens up that pool quite a bit. Um, so <clears throat> Scott, any uh, other, yeah, so. yeah, any other advice um, that you'd want to share with our viewers or trends that you're seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, we've seen, there's a variety of trends, right? I think I've seen a tremendous amount the past couple of years, really, within big data. Um, and artificial intelligence. The NLP data sector is one that I think is primed for a lot of growth. Some of those folks typically employed those technologies to analyze financial documents or earnings calls to detect instances to potentially short a stock or where alpha may be generated. So within the confines of understanding your own data through text analysis, those types of firms are actually doing this now to detect audience engagement, how perhaps uh, audience rather engagement to detect how can we better get in touch with our potential consumers, how can we better understand what their sentiment is about our business, and analyzing all of the written and spoken word um, at a high, high, far higher volume than what would have been otherwise possible. So that's that's a very exciting space as they perfected deep learning technology made it a little bit more reliable at detecting the nuances of human language. Aside from that, I would say that geospatial location data is another one that's quite interesting. 
they're you know being able to track you know it went from if you think of the folks who were maybe in manufacturing who in the wake of the pandemic switched from you know paper towels or to making masks right and adapting on the fly we saw a lot of that with folks taking geospatial location data which was often used to detect foot traffic for retail um, or perhaps you know better understanding where your consumers are or, or where your shipping freights might be leaving and departing from um, and they're employing that to track the pandemic and that was some of the things that emerged in this new world that I found I wouldn't say I thought it was unique right it was certainly a nuance to the way business has been conducted yeah yeah no that's interesting I, I love talking about AI and I interview a lot of folks actually about AI um, just yesterday I spoke with somebody that implemented an AI solution in a bar um, at like a, a <laughs> restaurant and it was counting the drinks that went across the counter and then it, it, it um, reconciled that with the amount of drinks that were that were in the register, the money in the register, basically. So if they if they sold a thousand drinks, but then they saw eleven hundred drinks go across the the bar, then they something was wrong. Probably a right? good way to f figure out how to cut somebody off as well. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. So it's just amazing <laughs> that I never never cease to be amazed by the new uh, technology out there with the AI piece. So, uh, but hey, we're going to wrap things up. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, Scott. I really appreciate it. If people want to reach out and find you, what's the best way for them to do that, Scott? Yeah, happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. I have some tips and some articles I've written for folks who are maybe been displaced by the pandemic or from layoffs and uh, happy to always take a look at resumes or pass along leads or even represent folks. So LinkedIn would be the best. And that is, uh, my first name. It's Scott DeAngelis. And, uh, I'm, it's Selby Jennings. You could, I should come up on our company page as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Um, and thank you to our viewers. I'm your host, Daniel Beatty. We'll see you next time on Tech Champions.